Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, August 14th, around 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. We're here live at the volcano, and it something's happening with the camera here. <laughs> But we have two erupting volcanoes live. Kilauea just started erupting a few hours ago, and we're going to bring them to you. But the big story is the monsoon rain, and it doesn't look like moisture is going anywhere. Monsoon is at its peak this month. Keep calm. It's monsoon time. Lake Mead's unusual summer rise is likely aided by the monsoon. Say it ain't snow. No, it's actually rain, monsoonal rain. And according to this, it's been the wettest Las Vegas Valley monsoon season in over a decade. Likely is not the only reason, but take a look at this. The average rainfall during monsoon is just one inch. And this year, and we still have a long way to go, seven weeks of monsoon to go, they're already at 1.28 inches. Now take a look at this. 3.6 inches back in 2012. I wonder if this is following the solar cycle. That would mean that 2023 would be the wettest monsoon compar comparable to 2012. So we'll see what happens in 2023 with the monsoon as this season is, well, we're just in the middle of it and at the peak. So these numbers will definitely go up, especially with the forecast models that I'm about to show you. Now the rise in the lake is 1.26 feet. That's 15 inch rise in Lake Mead after many people, well, they were saying it's just gonna dry and shrivel up. But the lake, this huge lake, take a look how big it is, is up 15 inches in just the last week or so. And that is good news for Lake Mead. Now Scottsdale was hit hard by Friday's monsoon and we told you that. And we actually saw a similar scene here in the valley yesterday. Families in Scottsdale dealing with last night's weather as they really brace for even more this weekend. That was the woman that was being rescued that got stuck in a skate park. ABC 15's Patrick Hayes giving us an even closer look at last night's damage and showing us what you need to be on the lookout for. From water rescues to storm damage, Friday's monsoon weather is still being felt on Saturday. This was the most flooding I've ever seen. I was, I was shocked. Families in Scottsdale say it was one of the worst storms they've seen. Crews still fixing power lines, keeping some roads closed. In 25 years of living here, it was the worst storm Mommy, I've been it. around. And while thousands did... You heard that in 25 years, the worst storm she has seen. And it may be worse next year, and it may get worse later this summer. What a bummer. Here we're looking at the total precipitated moisture, and you can see that Arizona, just in the next 24 hours, we're actually looking at 72 hours here, is the big winner. And southern Utah, which is going to be feeding Lake Mead some more, as well as Colorado. And up here in north the northeast of New Mexico, they could be picking up as much as four or five inches. There are burn scars in this region, so that could be a dangerous scenario setting up. So you can see here, there's where the major moisture is going to be for the next 72 hours in the U.S., focused on the Four Corners region and uh, here in central, the central Atlantic, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina. So those are where your big rain totals are going to come. Now, a huge drop in Lake Michigan's water temperature. Also a very interesting phenomenon happening here on the 12th of August, where temperatures went from 76 degrees all the way down to 45 degrees. Yeah, water temperature fell to 45 degrees, a drop of 25 degrees. Water that cold can be dangerous and hypothermic, and this is due to upwelling currents where you could be swimming one day at 76 and then think you're jumping in the same water the next day and, well, it's 55. Holy macaroni. So, heads up, a lot of, we've seen a lot of fatalities on Lake Michigan this year and, well, with the upwelling, it could get worse over the next few days. People are not prepared for hypothermia in the summer. And let's take a look at the long-term forecast for hypothermia in the U.S. Not going to happen, but you're going to see there's isolated hot spot is going to be centered in the, um, southeast and the center of the country. This area I'm outlining here is the only area that will really have any excessive heat for the next few days. So here we are. Uh, let's just bring it through to today, Sunday. You can see that Kansas is going to be the big winner with temperatures possibly in the 100 degree range. 103 on Monday in Kansas. 105 on Tuesday in Kansas. And in, in hundreds in Oklahoma. So it it's going to be start moving south here on Tuesday. 
By Wednesday, it's going to be hot in North Texas and Oklahoma exclusively. Look at that little pocket of heat. Where it was once 105, it's only going to be in the 70s or 80s. So we have this blocking pattern causing this major heat in the California valleys, uh, through Death Valley, through southern Arizona. So it's going to be very hot in the hot areas of the U.S. moving through August. And as we get to the end of August, that heat's going to move all the way up to North and South Dakota here, where it's going to be in the hundreds by the end of August. So heads up, those are your temperatures. Now, monsoon and heavy rain this weekend, we know that. Monsoonal showers and thunderstorms may result in flash flooding and debris flows from the Four Corners region to the southwest, to the central Rockies through the weekend and into the week. The rain is actually going to pick up in the Four Corners region starting Monday. A tropical wave is expected to move inland in South Texas today and bring widespread rain, rainfall and thunderstorms to the region into Tuesday. Heavy rain also possible in the central Appalachians and southern Florida. So heads up in those areas. Now, mass crop failures are expected in England due to drying conditions and drought conditions in some area. And that's exposing hunger stones. Hello. And it also means, well... There's going to be food shortages. Leaked documents predict crop failure rates of up to 50% as water companies resist calls to prioritize food production. They, this is very bizarre. These companies don't care. It's their own families that are not going to have the food. Um, and there's even worse repercussions for this drought. And here, Bloomberg saying food fears are quickening. Well, I'm scared of the food they're making. And what's happening because of the food fears is GMO crop approvals are happening more rapidly than ever before in the past. These are untested, genetically modified crops that they're going to put into the food supply rapidly to feed the world. When we can see that's absolutely what is not happening. We don't need GMO crops. We need water. Seismic update. We had a big rumbler a few hours ago in the Kermadec Islands. No tsunami warning, 6.6. .6. Biggest quake in days, but all is quiet on the Western Front until a potential coronal hole, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, ups the earthquake warning in a few days. So we should be seeing some big quakes in the next week, in my opinion. Earthquake swarm in American Samoa's Manu Islands. Recent activity from earthquake swarm in America's Samoa's Manu Islands suggests a local volcanic source. Now, don't get your panties in a bunch. This isn't going to be a big boom. It's more like a Hawaiian island boom. And there are several volcanoes here that could be responsible. According to the HVO, staff from the National Park of American Samoa and residents of Tau indicate that activity began on July 26. There have been earthquakes reported by residents of Ofu and Ulsega since August 10th. And HVO reports that the quakes have varied in intensity, but in general have been described as short, sharp jolts. Now, scientists with the HVO say the Tau Shield volcano last erupted in 1866 as a submarine cone that formed between Tau and Osfu Oslega Islands. And this submarine seamount that last erupted in 2003 could also be the culprit Vau Lulu during which a comb formed in the summit caldera. So none of these are explosive or too dangerous. Uh, just another volcano that may be erupting that hasn't erupted potentially since the 1800s. So we brought that to your attention. Now, Worldwide Volcano News Update. We've got a couple other. Cadavar went off today up to 7,000 feet. All right, sorry about that. Real quick, back to Cadavar. Cadavar blasting off to 7,000 feet. What else do we have here on the plate? All is quiet on the uh, volcanic front. Pretty normal activity worldwide. Um, nothing spectacular to report. Well, actually, we do have some spectacular uh, things to report in Iceland. And here we are live, and let's see how that's going to play out. Okay, they got the cameras fixed, and we do have some audio. This is coming at the Langkjöl. This is the Fagralsfall. New eruption in Iceland where there is one main spatter cone now uh, that you can see the massive river of lava that is continuously flowing out from the center of the earth <laughs> the mid-ocean ridge in fact well actually it's just coming down coming up from the mantle not the center of the earth but it sounds better doesn't it and we also have reports and a new channel that we helped promote about a year ago two pineapples is now reporting live from Kilauea at the, uh, at the volcano, which has began erupting a few hours ago. So if you want to see and follow the Kilauea live eruption, go over to Two Pineapples, give them a thumbs up, and tell them Diamond sent you. They are well aware of us. 
uh, at Oppenheimer Ranch Project. So go check those uh, two live streams out and, well, monitor the volcanoes yourself. Now let's check out some space weather. We did have uh, X-ray flux has gone up as of yesterday into the sea range, and it's staying up pretty high. We've had some sea flares, but nothing significant, just minor sea flare activity. There are at least seven active regions on the sun, all tiny little pinprick sunspots. The big news will be coronal hole 14, which will be earth-facing in about two days, and we could see some geo-effective stuff at the end of the week, next week, Thursday, Friday, meaning we could see some geomagnetic storms from this plasma stream hitting Earth. So, moving on, a loud boom was reported across northern Utah and most likely a meteor, most likely a meteor associated with the Perseids. Let's see what they have to say. Studio, a boom causing commotion all over a Earth, boom. as far north as Idaho, and as far south as Utah County. That's right. We were doing our morning show when both Dina and I heard that big boom. And you see a little something right there on your screen. Many people speculating about just what it was. Fox 13 News reporter Mythili Gooby joins us with what experts say happened and how people who heard the boom felt about it. Clearly it's aliens. Mythili. People across Utah were startled by the loud boom this morning. It was all over social media. There was commotion about it. We got calls to our newsroom and chatter about what this mystery sound was all about. The answer, a meteor in the sky miles above us. That's the sound of a mysterious sonic boom from around 8.30 a.m. Saturday morning. I actually thought Part of my tree had broken off and hit my house. So I, that's why I went out and I started looking around and I was completely confused. So it was a relief to find out it was something else. <laughs> I have experienced many earthquakes. And um, so because everything shakes, the, ha the house, the, um, the walls, and definitely it was not that case here. Just a big sound. Soon after the sound, Governor Spencer Cox tweeted that it wasn't an earthquake or military related event. Sound didn't decay like a normal sound. It went on and on, kind of like thunder rolling. The boom was actually caused by a meteor. Here you can see the flash of light race across the sky. Robert Lunsford with the American Meteor Society. Wow, that's a nice bowl It's to hear the sound created by a meteor. Your normal meteor is only the size of a, a, a pea or a small pebble. Uh, this particular object was probably the size of a beach ball. What this one was probably like what, uh, was so, something like this guy, right? So you, you've got a big chunk of rock flying through space, and sometimes they even break up and then you can get multiple booms. That's why when the meteor came through the Earth's atmosphere, it pushed on the sound waves resulting in the boom. Well, anything that surpasses the speed of sound, uh, where the air is thick enough to carry sound waves, can create a sonic boom. And, uh, you know, really, the only thing that really does that is, is lightning and uh, a supersonic jet and a meteor. So there you have it. The Perseid meteor showers are getting bigger and big booms over Utah. Likely a beach ball sized meteor and there could be fragments on the surface. I'm sure there'll be more follow up on this big boom in Utah. Now nuclear fusion breakthrough. This has been the title of hundreds of articles over the last several decades. And it's the same story. They create fusion. Everyone questions it. And there's no way for us to capture the energy. Complete waste of money and time, in my opinion, like dark energy and dark matter. And they continue, well, to smash atoms and to create controversy, but not create any energy. <laughs> now, one of the oldest computers in the world was discovered in 1901, I believe, the Antikythera Mechanism. And this is one of those unexplained things on how we were so advanced thousands of years ago and lost the knowledge and didn't gain it back until just recently. In fact, the Antikythera theorem mechanism is one of the most studied ancient objects in history. Thousands of papers, thousands of scientists, multidisciplinary approach have tackled 
the problem. In a paper coming out in 2021, a model of the cosmos in ancient Greek Antikythera mechanism is one of the most comprehensive papers on what the object looked like, what it did, and how it operated, including the mathematics. Absolutely fantastic mechanism. And they were only able to get this level of accuracy due to three-dimensional X-ray imaging. And it revealed almost all of the gears and it set them up well to recreate the mechanism itself. There are many great documentaries on this thousands of year old computer and the technology that was lost. Now, take a look at this video here. I'm not gonna play the audio because we'll, well, we'll probably get copyright. But this is the working mechanisms of the Antikythera cosmos and the Antikythera machine. And this was based on all observational astro astronomy and astrology at the time and the way that they viewed the cosmos. Now, let's bring this up to 8 minutes 40 here. And here you can see some of that 3D imaging. X-ray CT fragment A, and as you go through it, you can see the gears thousands of years old, sitting at the bottom of the ocean, revealed for the first time ever. And because of this imaging, they were able to recreate the mechanism. Absolutely fascinating. If you want to know more, come down here and subscribe and watch it on Eargasm ASMR about the Antikythera mechanism solved. Absolutely fascinating. And I will be doing a full expose on this over at Magnetic Reversal News in the future. Now, another big discovery I want to talk about are mastodon bones discovered during a West Michigan road project just recently. This article coming out on August 12th. Several people are working to unearth mastodon bones in West Michigan after they were discovered during a road construction project. This could be the largest and complete skeleton of a mastodon, and it has already been donated to the museum. It is completely fantastic preservation. Take a look at some of these bones and the excavation site itself. Submerged in this anoxic mud, complete preservation of almost an entire animal potentially. And the excavation is going on, and it is absolutely fantastic. A gigantic mastodon found in Michigan, and the excavation continues. Fantastic. Now, let's talk about hunger stones. These have been exposed several times since we began the channel, and for good reason. Because we're entering a new paradigm, the end of the empire event, the thousand year bond cycle, a grand solar minimum, the beginning of the next phase of the ice age, and a magnetic excursion all at the same time. And this results in, well, catastrophic weather in some places, catastrophic drought in others. So we have flooding in some areas, thousand year floods, 500 year floods, quite regular, and now we have the 500,000 year droughts in some areas. And in Europe, these expose the hunger stones. And the hunger stones were named such because of the warnings with the low water levels. In fact, some of the warnings on these Hungerstein, or hunger stones, according to local German reporter Olaf Kolns, these are on the Elbe River, which runs from the mountains of Czechia through Germany, and hunger stones like these were used as hydrological landmarks across Central Europe. When the stones last surfaced during the 2018 drought, we knew it was the beginning of a series of events, well, that we're reporting on now. And that's as far as I'll go here. In fact, some of the messages say things like, when you see this, cry. And so those are well above the current water level. As you can see, it's way down here. And let's just blow up the picture. And this drought is on one of the worst in 500 years, just as I said. So let's see if we can pull up this shot of a hunger stone in the current water level from this, from the tweet box. Take a look at that. So the water level is below some of these historic marks in 1934, 961, I, 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 these are upside down, potentially. Interesting. There's a star mark there. So, much lower than before. And, well, interesting nonetheless. So, don't be scared. Be prepared. And that's why we're here with the channel.
to give you the news you need to know and the know you need to use it. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. You can always support the channel and support yourself by going to preparewiththeranch.com and getting some long-term food storage from my Patriot Supply. You can also uh, go to our link below for the Jace case. If you're a prepper and you're looking for antibiotic products for long-term storage, check out the Jace case. We also have a preparedness store and on and on, all the links are below. And we appreciate each and every one of you that supports the channel through these links. We also appreciate our Patreons, our one-time donors, and the heroes that share this video. We'll see you soon, and that's a boom.